Well, since arriving at Trent uh, about four years ago, I've taught two main kinds of courses. I've taught history of philosophy courses that are required for philosophy majors and minors, and I've taught applied ethics courses that bring in students from all over the university. I've also uh, recently designed a new course on the meaning of life, which uh, I'll teach for the first time next year that I'm really excited about. The way that I teach depends on what I'm teaching and uh, whom I'm teaching, but there is one constant uh, in all my teaching. So like most philosophers, I try to lecture as little as possible and I try to imitate Socrates by uh, teaching, by asking questions and by engaging in dialogue with students. When I teach my history of philosophy courses, I'm a bit of a traditionalist and uh, maybe even a bit of a romantic in the sense that I'm uh, motivated by a vision of the students in me sitting around a table with a dusty old book in front of us, trying to wrap our minds around what some great author 400 years ago was thinking about. Um, and I do hope that as university education continues to evolve and change in response to technology, there's always going to be room for that no tech, uh, but very enriching experience of uh, dialoguing with great authors from past ages. In my applied ethics courses, it's completely different though. I throw all the old books and, and, and theories out the window, at the beginning anyway, and I focus everybody's attention on the concrete, the specific, the here and now. So I've been experimenting for the last three years with a case-based approach to applied ethics. Uh, it involves starting every discussion with the students off with um, something from current events, something from the news of the past year. Uh, and in many cases, news of much more recently than the past year. So in my cyber ethics class this semester, about a quarter of the course focuses on events that happened the month before the course began. I try to keep it up to the minute because cyber ethics, which is the study of ethical problems arising from the internet, uh, is changing all the time and so I think it has to be up to the minute. I use cases from the news in a variety of different ways. Uh, news items are part of the course content, so students have to read the news, they have to know about it, uh, they'll be tested on it. Um, also, I use current events as ways of teaching moral principles and ethical theories. So we start the discussion with the news, but we start to discover through our debates with one another that we really need to bring in some principles and some theories to clarify what's going on. So in that way, I reverse what, at least in my experience, was the traditional approach to applied ethics, where you start with theory, big ideas, and then you bring in a case or two maybe at the end to illustrate what was going on. I flip that, start with the case, and make students feel the need for the theory after uh, we've come to an impasse in our discussion of the case. My history of philosophy courses, I hope that students will take away the idea that all great ideas uh, are products of dialogue and debate. So when I teach history of philosophy courses, I try to show that the great authors that we're studying, like Descartes and Locke and Hume, were always responding to contemporaries. They were, they were never just sitting in a room by themselves having great ideas. They were dialoguing with people around them. Uh, and so a lot of my history of philosophy courses involve looking at minor forgotten figures, people that have fallen off the intellectual map for us today, but were very much on the map then. From my applied ethics courses, I hope the students go away reading the news a lot. Uh, I hope they gain a passion for being up on current events. I hope that they learn to critique the news that they read. I hope that they have an interest in looking at different news sources, different media perspectives, and that they gain an ability to uh, form an informed judgment of what's actually happening in the world. And I hope that they gain uh, some desire to do something about it as well.